service next Sunday. We pray for what you're going to do in between and all those folks working hard on that. We pray for justice and we pray for peace that comes through your son Jesus Christ. Many people are struggling with the demons of addictate, addiction and doubt, and temptation, down out of evil sin. Let them stand those demons up and through the power of your son Jesus Christ knock them down. Let us be in the presence of your love and your grace and your holiness. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Oh 
For our scripture reading this morning, I invite you to take the Word of God out. I invite you to take your Bibles out. I invite you to take your swords out. The sword of the Spirit is the very Word of God. We're going to go to the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. John 14, 15 through 21. Listen now to the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither does it know him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, world sees me no more but you see me because I live you shall live also at that day you shall know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you he that has my commandments and keeps them is he that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Praise be the Lord, our God, for these words. Amen. Let us pray now. Dear Heavenly Father, dear God, we thank you for these words of love. We thank you for the words of comfort that Jesus told us that he will not leave us comfortless, that he will send the Spirit, the Spirit that we know that is all around us, the words of love that tells us that we will love Jesus, and he loves us, and the Father loves him, therefore the Father loves us. We thank you for this abounding love, and we thank you for this amazing grace. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Christianity is a religion of love. We have often heard the phrase, love one another for love is of God in our hymns. Our, our God incarnate commanded us to love one another as we love ourselves. And even the words of this very holy book Proclaim that our God himself is love. But what, pray tell, is the definition of that love? And how are we to manifest and to express that love? How are we to feel that love when love itself can be this confusing, ju jumbled thing that oftentimes makes no sense even to us who are caught in the grip of it. But the Almighty in his wisdom has given us a definition of what our love to him is to be. For as it is said in the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, from the 15th unto the 21st verse, I say again, John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. Listen now unto the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, is he that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Praise be unto the Lord our God for these words. Amen. That is the biblical definition of how our love for God is to be expressed. That is the commandment that our Father gave us. That is the love that we are to show. Obedience. To do as our God has commanded. To show in our works and our actions that we love God. Not simply in empty declarations of faith, not simply in an outpouring of our heart's affection for God, but instead by doing the work and the commandments of God here on this earth and in our lives. For what is love without obedience? What is love without doing what our lover likes, what our lover wants, and what the one whom we love desires. How can we say that we love someone even on this human mortal level without acting in a way that is pleasing to them? How can we claim to love anything without acting in ways that are good for them or for it. Even as our faith 
is not complete without works. For as said in James <clears throat> chapter 2, verse 20, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? And indeed, up in verse 18 it declares, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without, my work, without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. That is how we are to show our love for God. That is how we are to show that we are part of God's family, his children and his bride all at once in the holy unity of the church by doing what our love commands of us, by doing what our God commands of us, we show that we love him. And indeed, all too often, this idea of loving God, we think of it as this infatuation, this empty affection and desire without thinking of doing what the one we love wants. We are so caught up in that desire to have the ecstasies of union with God, so does caught up with desire to use God as we would a partner or a lover, that we do not do what he wants us to do so that we may have that perfect union, almost as though we lusted after God, but did not love Him. For feeling without doing, for having that burning desire, without truly interacting with and doing what the object of your desire wants, that is not love, but the foulest type of lust. And indeed, the Bible is filled with examples of this evil, this type of desire to use the Almighty for the joys and the power He gives without consideration for the love that we must show to him. And indeed, one quite obvious example lies in the tale of Solomon, a man possessed of lust in many forms. As is told in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. Listen now unto the words of the scribes of Israel. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edenites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon Clave unto these in love. And he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build and high place for Chemosh, 
the abomination of Moab in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. Praise be unto the Lord our God these words. Amen. That is how one man was turned from God. How after Solomon had built this great and glorious temple for the Almighty, after God had lifted him up from the inheritor of, the, of a shattered empire into one of the greatest and wisest kings of history, after David his father had been lifted up from a mere tribal chieftain into a great warlord of, of the Levant, Solomon turned from the Almighty. He desired the power and the love of God, but he did not love God. Instead, to put things simply, he treated the God of his people, the God of his fathers, as he would one of his lesser wives, building a house for them and then, and then keeping them within that home shuttling them away to, to be interacted with when needed or desired, lusting after that power, that joy, but not doing what was needed to properly interact with the affection and the object of that love. And indeed, that is the trap that all of us must avoid falling into. To not simply have the Almighty as this distant object of affection that can never be approached, but instead to have him as our lover, our friend, our companion, the one whom we go to and interact with and do his commandments, do the things that our God enjoys, that we may love him, and that he in our love for him shall come and dwell with us. And indeed, we must give our all for our love, give all for our God, even as Christ in his sacrifice gave all for us. To do as Christ commands in Luke 10, 27. I say again, Luke chapter 10 and verse 27. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. That is the love we must have for God, to love in action, so that every ounce of our strength, of our mind, of our souls is bent towards the fulfillment and the doing of his will here on this earth, to love in action, not simply an empty infatuation, to love and to interact with this great and glorious divinity. That is what love is for us towards God. And that is what we must do. And indeed, we must accept the love that God has for us, and accept our responsibility, to our duty, our obligation to love him back. We must love the Lord our God with all of 
of our heart, with all of our strength, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind, in that everlasting relationship, that should we cling faithfully to it, shall never end. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. 